this should be up and running, but I can't tell. So, just gone live. I posted a little GIF of um, uh, the, this door animating. So I'm going to do some extra detail bits. Basically, um, Mike Phoenix uh, showed me a picture of his version of the door that I was I was making. And um, he's got a lot more detail in it than mine, so he's kind of shamed me into going back and doing some things. So what we're going to be doing is making some detail bits. So this scroll bar at the top, um, some detail bolts that go into the wall, make some odd boxes. But because most people really, 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 really hate an object builder, um, I actually love it, and it's slightly masochistic, um, but this is, I don't know, by way of a bit of a tutorial, a bit of a show-off, I don't know. Um, I've been using Object Builder since 2002, or when it was 02 originally, when it came out, when, when it first came out. I know it didn't come out on the first release of... Um, uh, OFP, but uh, it came out pretty close after. Um, now, I have a background in engineering. I have, I used to be a CAD designer. Um, I did design work on primarily um, aerospace stuff originally and nuclear stuff. I used to use AutoCAD and I then went on to CADS 5, Airbus. Airbus, that was and I did some Katir work because that was the, the tool for uh, Eurofighter and um, I have been into CAD have you say that? I have been interested in CAD since I was 16 years old, since my uh, high school teacher introduced me to it I can't remember what the program was but it ran on the BBC B that kind of dates me um 48 this this year, or I am 48. Um, 49. Don't know. I'm going senile. I was born in 72 anyway. Um, it's like it's 20 past one in the morning, uh, and I'm waffling to myself. Slight insomnia. Anyway, um, this door is going to be part of a larger building, which you can see little bits of. That's a 30 meter section. Um, what I've done is, you can't see this, but I split it out into lots. It's the framing work. It's going to go inside. Um, empty lot. That's the end wall panel section. Um, again, I was trying to work out a few things. Um, that's the end wall with a replicant of the door in there. Um, this is a 140 meter section by 80 meters if I to earth. Going to Bovington. What we are looking at, right? Just let it zoom in, shall I? Uh, what we're looking at is there's Bovington Camp, and you can see this giant shed. But this shed is actually 160 meters by wide, according to the tool on it. So this is what we're making. Um, if I go to Street View, there's a lot of four three twos, and it's like spawns and whatever there. But that's that's the shed. That's the shed that we're making. And it's going to be made in component parts, so it'll be kind of modern. Um, and there'll be bays between um, things. And you'd be able to build your own structures and stuff inside it um, using the um, Eden placeable things, so kill houses. There'll be overhead walls, all sorts. 
Uh, anyway, so that's what you're looking at. That's what we're getting. I'm gesticulating at the screen here. I'm really getting into this. This is kind of a bit weird for me. Um, right, and I've not even been drinking. Um, so let's go back to this. Now, O2 gets a really bad rap, in my opinion. So I like it because it's simple. It works um, very well on even my vintage surface i have an old surface pro um but people don't like it because it's got it doesn't have the funky tools that a lot of um uh a lot of other sort of nicer or modern tools have got so what i'm gonna do sorry what I'm going to do at the moment is uh, I'm going to center my pin. So C and press space, which centers the screen. Um, I'm going to make some bolts. And obviously, we're going to, this door needs to be mounted or bolted to the, the framework building. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make some high poly bolts for this. But they're not, it's going to be mid poly, it's not really going to be high poly. Um, but it's just a simple technique that you can use in O2 if you don't have access to, I personally use Modo, Max, Blender, whatever. But if you need to nip into O2 and do stuff, um, it's actually quite a good tool, um, surprisingly good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a bolt, a washer, um, and a nut, essentially, that you can... Uh, we'll see, and I'm going to use that to bake um, from high poly to a low poly version. Um, nothing special. It should only take five minutes. So I'm going to do it from primitive. So I'm going to create a cylinder. Um, I am going to make it a 0.5 radius cylinder at the moment, just so it's easier to see, because uh, Object Builder's resolution when you zoom in gets a little bit funky. It's not brilliant. Um, I'm going to make it 36 sides around. Um, I'm fine with a one meter depth, and I want two sections, two segments. Oh, so, looking at that. If I just bring that back up. So pressing space should zoom everything into the center of the active window. So what I'm going to do is click on Select Vertices Tool. I've got to stop push, uh, pushing push to talk as well. Uh, right. So I press C to center my pin. Now, something that uh, I've just shown Mike recently, because he, he said it was magic, was I don't know whether you can see this. Um, let me move the pin out. Right. So you can see I've got a little cross here. Um, with a circle around. Normally when you center the pin, it comes up as that. Um, I used to teach this stuff and I can't remember where it is. There you go, see, center pin, use pin. So when you center a pin, when you have this pin, you can rotate around it, you can move objects and things like this. Um, so I And it's move. This is moving around the object center. It's not actually moving around the pin itself. So if I press Shift and C and brings a circle up, this means that the pin now becomes the active center. So I use this a lot. Um, I I leave it on, leave it active. Now I've pressed C to center around the selection. I still press and push the talk as well. So um, I've gone to the point menu, um, transform 2D scale, and I'm going to put it down to 0.85. So what this is going to be, this is going to be a nut. So let's have a. Uh, Let's see if we can find a nice image. So 
So let's use that. Let's go with it. So there's a little bit of a taper there. Now I, I could go mad. I could do this in incredibly high poly, and I'm sure there's other other ways to do it, and there's better tools to do it in. But this is Object Builder. We don't have to go. Um, right. So blocking up here. I don't know see the cursor at the moment. I haven't got a highlight, so I should do that. So when I've got the top window selected, you can see the black black box around it. Um, I am going to lock it in the X axis. So I'm going to press the X key, but you can do that up here as well. So right click and I can then slide the selected points along the axis, along the axis. So it's very simple. I'm going to leave it at one meter thickness for the moment. It's going to be blue. So I'm going back to my left, which is actually the front, because it's up. I'm not perfect, I promise. And I am now going to create in the center point. And you'll notice I actually centered it in the entirety of the object. It doesn't really matter at this stage. Making the left window active again. Create. We create a cylinder. Because it's a hex nut, um, it's going to be six sided. Um, it's um, a 0.5 radius. Um, and it's one segment. This is going to be the cutter. This is going to be the form of the nut. So if you go back to that, so you can see. It starts off as a cylinder, it's got chamfered sides off it, and you've got a little nice little chamfered edge. So what I'm gonna do to there, with it selected, see it there. Um I am gonna use this to cut, to carve a shape out of the other out of the unselected piece. So I'm gonna go create. Um, sorry, is it structure? Sorry, not create structure. Carve. It's been a long time since I've had to explain this to me. Um, right. So the cutter is no longer needed. I don't need it. So I'm going to delete it. So you can press the delete. So what I am going to do now is I am going to. You can see where it's actually cut the line. So this is the the vertices for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all of these away that I don't need. Because I'm going to be at a rotate and copy stuff, what I am going to do is just remove all the bits that I don't. I will say I've actually done this a few times. I've used periodically over the last, I don't know how many years, 2020, so I've been doing modding for this game series for nearly 20 years, so 18 years. Um, I've been modding since 1995, sim stuff. So, is this not new? I say I am the wrong side of 45. Um, and I've been, when I got out of the military, I went straight into an engineering space and which was heavily focused on CAD as well. So I'm going to say that I, I've been CAD for a very long time. It certainly feels like a very long time. Isn't it? Um, so if I jump bits uh, to know more, please ask Twitter or Join our Discord. Details of which are actually on the RKSL Twitter. Um, I don't mind asking questions. I've got a, I have a strong belief that um, I won't give you models. It's that simple. If you come asking for my models, I will not give you models. So don't want to offend anybody, but um, just don't ask. It's easier. But I will tell you how to do stuff. 
I am a great believer in the give a man a fish principle. Um, it's, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's um, it's the old adage about give a man a fish, you'll eat, you'll eat for a day. Um, give a man, teach a man how to fish, he'll eat for the rest of his life. Um, so let me turn the DM stuff off so we can see points and things. Right. So what I'm going to do now, I've deleted all of the bits that I'm not going to need. Because what I'm going to do, the rest of it, I am going to copy the good mesh that I create. So I don't need the points in between there. So what I'm going to do is select those points. Now, O2 and the RV engine, the real virtual reality engine, is a vertex-based system. It is not like the other game engines, which is about polygons or anything like that. It is very, very important that you reduce the number of vertices or optimize the number of vertices you can use. Now, I'm going to, I've am selected those three points. I'm going to press F6 on my keyboard, and that creates a face. I'm going to do the same thing again for these others. And if it doesn't let you create, down here in the lower side, you can see selected points, five. You can only create a face between three or four points. So something is not happy. So there's two points there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Shift D, and that merges those two points. So when I select this now, I've still got four points because two points have merged. So we'll go back up there. That's got one point. That's got the two points. So let's do that. So if I, just to smooth things out, make things a little quicker, I'm going to press Control A. It selects everything in this lot in this scene. Um, and I'm going to go to Points, Merge Near, and I'll leave this value as it is. Since old object builders unit size is effectively one unit per meter, um, you're talking, you know, fractions of a millimeter at this point. A tenth of a millimeter is that. Um, so click OK, and that should have merged any verts that are on top of each other. There you go. There's three, there's four. So press F6 now. In this, I'm going to triangulate this now because it's four four faces. People talk about face count as though it's performance uh, issue. While faces are important, don't get me wrong. Um, anything that the computer needs to draw, it is going to draw on. It's going to need resources, which is going to affect performance. Um, but vertices are just as important in this game. In this game. So what I've done is I've just used one of the angle keys, uh, the, sorry, um, slash keys, so question mark. Next to the Z key or next to the right arrow key or right chevron key, describe it. Um, and these will split the object um, or split the face um, different ways. It'll left face or right face. Um, that's not a very good explanation there. Sorry about that. Um, so let me show you. If I go fourth faces there. So that was the left hand key. That was the right hand key. So you can see it's it decides it changes the angle at which uh, it splits the face. Right. So I'm going to go back up to the top again. I'm doing this partly because I need to get my hours up, apparently, to get a few different states. I don't really understand how Twitch works, but go, you know, I'm going there anyway. Right, so what I did there um, was, just to prove a point, I selected two faces there, I press C, and it moves that point, uh, the, the pin, to the center point between those two faces. If I select another point and press C, Again, it moves it to the average point between those faces. So you notice it's not equidistant between each face, but it's the average of the distances. 
that makes sense. So if you want to find the center of an object, you either select all the points. So we do this. And press C, takes it to the center. Or you can use two opposing points. Like that, and press C. It's obviously not exactly opposing. Change that point. There we go, opposing point, center point. So I'm going to use that as a pivot. So what I'm doing is, is I'm selecting this finished face. And I'm going to go, I'm going to copy it, deselected it. I've now pasted it. You can see that it's overlaid. You can scroll up and down the windows using the arrow. So you can see it's overlaid there. I'm going to go back to point, transform, rotate, 60 degrees. 360 divided by 60, uh, by 6, sorry, 60, 60 again. Normally you could use an array tool for this, but I haven't, I have yet in all the years to find anything in Object Builder that has an array tool. But again, it's an old tool. It's, it hasn't really changed much since 2002, 2002 first introduced. Okay, so you notice there's a difference now. I've selected everything and pressed C. So the number of vertices is, is off because the center has moved. So looking down here, selected points, 131, 137 faces. So what I'm going to do is go points, merge, and again, not changing the value. See the points have dropped. And this is because um, of all the, the faces that I've, I've copied around, they weren't merged to the mesh. They were just sitting next to each other. Um, so... I just to illustrate the point, press C to center, you can see it's gone back, so it's all merged. If I create a plane, let's just zoom out. So, one plane, we've got two planes there. Now, if I select that, you can see that it's got eight selected points down here, like in the lower screen. Um, See where I'm highlighting now. Again. Selected points A, selected faces two. Now, here's a piece of magic that Mike absolutely uh, loved. So I've selected this little tool up here, the move pin tool. Now I'm hovering over one vertice. You see this little blue box appears. So right clicking. And with the axis locked in X, um, I can slide it. So I'm going to turn the X axis off just to show something. So I can move that selected face around. So when I go back over the box, the blue little grab box turns up, right click, and I hover over another vertices, vertex rather, and it looks like it's joined, yeah? So there we go, two selected faces, but I've still got eight points. So if I go to point and merge near, I get six points. So that's one, two, three, six, and two faces. Optimization. So I'm going to press Control Z, Control Z again, Control Z just to move. Now. You don't always have to use merge now, or if you use merge now, it can it can do things. If you've it can screw things up for you, if you've got selections like, let's say, a canopy on a plane that is you want it to be able to open, but um, you don't want to merge it to the main model, you know. But they are the points are going to be sitting on top of each other. You can do something like this. So select both points that you want, and press Shift D. It'll merge the points. You can also, if I do that, I'm going to select that 
to a face, you can also go to structure, topology, split. And then you can move, separates the objects. Little bit of a tip, anyway. Back to Charging the battery. That was a bit of a surprise. I um, don't know whether you heard that, but my headset started charging. Um, right, so what I've done, I've gone to the top view. And I want to select the front face. So that front circle, circular face. Now, am I balling all this? I'm, I'm purely guessing at this stage. Um, so let's go back to that. So I'm going to say that's about 70% of the circumference. Now, I want something like a nylock looking bit. So I'm going to go structure. Uh, sorry, create extrude. Now, I am normally you'd move this face out. So if we're going to go down to the. Normally with an extrusion, you can move it. I don't want to. So I'm going to leave it where it is at the moment. And I'm not deselecting it. What I'm going to do is go point transform scale 0.75. So you see it shrunk the face in. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to go create extrude point transform scale 0.85. And I'm going to push this back slightly. Like I say, am I balling it? I'm not doing anything particularly precise with any of this, but it's just what it looks like or what it appears. How well, how good it appears. I don't know. So I'm going to go again to create, extrude, and I'm going to create the, the, the bolt that comes through the nut from the nut. So I'm going to stick it out about 30% of what it should be. Uh, sticking through the nut, essentially. Extrude. Because all bolts have a little bevel on them. I'm going to go point transform scale. Point 0.9. Just so it tapers it. I, I should have sent it to pin, but it's all right. So I'm going to center my pin on the back of that. I'm going to go to the left view, which is front view. Scroll back out. I'm going to create another cylinder to create the washer. So the radius on the nut um, between points rather than sides is 0 0.5. So I'm going to put 0 0.65. And I'm going to end up adjusting this. So, But I'm also going to make it um, 24 sides. It doesn't really matter. It looks fairly smooth. You can see it's oversized for the nut. Um, see, it's a little bit too big and a little bit too deep. Let's just move this in the center of the screen. So I'm going to lock the axis on this front window, on this top left window here now. Back. Again, you can be precise. You can move things with great precision in here. Um, all I'm doing is just moving it. I'm eyeballing it. I'm not doing anything special. I'm going to use my move pin tool. So blue box, right click. It meets the, the point and release. It's now moved and it's aligned. Because I've locked the axis, it's it's moved. It's still aligned to the center of the and everything else. Another tool that I use an awful lot is I select all of the points that I want. Now, I do this, I click P, and it brings the flattened points up. Now, you can choose to flatten the points. So if I go, let's say, flatten the point on the front plane, watch this top right-hand screen. It all flattens it there. That's, we don't want that. I don't want that because it, it makes a mess, you can see in the other, other views. But I tend to make the, the port that I want active, like P, leave it on the current view plane and click OK. Now, all that's done is just moved all these faces up to line. I don't want it to be quite... So I'm down a little bit. It's slightly... I'm going to make the 
you, you can drag the 3D preview up to whatever size you want. Scale line. So this little button here is used direct 3D, so it'll view it as a direct X object. Some of the, the newer tools have it enabled immediately. Right, so straight away, looking at when I've added solid for surfaces, which is that one is not coming up. Now, why is in solid? That should be solid view. I can see, um, you can see that there's a hole in the mesh that I've repeated around. I'm just going to quickly fix those. Intentional, but again, click the three points, press F6. And you can see the shading's a bit off in places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Pick Faces tool, which is this little one here. That's Pick All, that's Pick a, an Object. Let's pick a vertices, let's touch faces. I'm going to touch that face, I'm going to touch that. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this, but surfaces, um, sorry, faces. I normally do this with shortcuts. Oh, there we go, sorry, surfaces, sharp edge. Um, there is a an involved way about to explain how DirectX draws surfaces and how it, how it treats vertices and faces and polygon. When you have a smooth edge, it treats them as though you've got a, um, a contiguous object, a continuous form shape with different vertices in it. When you've got sharp points, it actually splits the face away from the joining vertices. So the thing that I showed you about optimizing your vertices, um, it kind of breaks them when you do sharp edges, but only in the way that the game engine draws them, so it treats them in a different way, so it uses different amount of resources. Um, not the best explanation, but it's also one of the main reasons that you need to optimize. So what I've done there um, is I've just used sharp edge, so I've pressed U. Um, again, I've been doing this so long now that I kind of instinctively do stuff. And talking about this while I'm doing it is actually quite surreal. I'm a little bit lost in some of the menus because I don't know. Um, I will say, I don't make everything in O2 in Object Builder. Um, I used to a long time ago. Um, if you, you know who I am from Armor 1 and Armor 2, you might be surprised to discover that the Armor 1, Armor 2, Puma, Lynx, Typhoon, um, a ton of other stuff that you probably didn't see that they weren't publicly released were all made in O2, Object Builder. Um, it's a bit painstaking, but I used to travel a lot in, in the day, back in the day, and I didn't have a gaming laptop that could run really good 3D tools. Um, so it was great to be able to run Object Builder on my crappy office laptop. So when I was sat on planes, trains, and automobiles, um, I could then um, just like make models as I went. So I'll press F9, so back to the full view. I'm going to go back to the top view and zoom down just to make because it's easier to grab some vertices. And just make sure you, you grab in the pieces and all the pieces you want. You to sharpen. Peter Sharper, Peter Sharper. I'm going to go back up here. Direct text back. Direct text is essentially the render of how the model. So you can see these this checker pattern. This checker pattern represents the UV map. So if I go to the, um, see that it's over here. 
there's different UV sets. Now, armor only uses one, unless you're using multi-materials, and it does use two, but it's a special case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the the active spares that I don't Now, you can see these. This is the faces. This is no texture assigned to any of this, but these are the faces that are generated by a primitive object. Um, or the mapping that's created when you create a primitive object. So what I'm going to do, put that there. I can select individual verts and things. You can go to edit, um, edit, auto select an object, tick that. You can see which faces are actually been selected. I just bring wireframe, see points that have been selected. Compared to grabbing uh, the editor. So what I'm going to do is select though, grab everything in there. I'm going to press delete. See how the check's gone? That meant it's completely wiped the UV mapping. Now this is not a big big deal because normally I would take stuff out of Object Builder, I'd export it in FBX and bring it into Modo, which is my preferred tool which we'll do in a bit, but um, because this is a high poly and the way that my workflow works, I don't paint my high polys. Um, I do on some projects for different reasons, but generally when I'm going to bake something, I make a high poly and I leave it because what I'm interested in is geometry, not the, 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 the mapping, um, because most tools don't care about the mapping from a high poly object. Um, my particular workflow, I will export a high poly, um, leave it as is. Um, I will then make a low poly that um, I unwrap and lay out properly, and I'll bring it into Substance or X Normal. Depends what the other tools are. Um, recently, I was gifted Marmoset tool bag by an ex girlfriend of mine. Don't ask me, it's a long story. Um, but um, I haven't really haven't learned to use Marmoset properly yet. I've had a tinker, and that's it. I tend to use Modo um, for my modding tool and unwrapping, and I tend to um, do a lot of stuff with Substance Painter. Perhaps something of an admission at this stage. I don't really do my best work for armor because some of the stuff that I used to do commercially it was the, the, the complete opposite end some of it was low poly stuff I've done stuff for discovery channel I've done stuff for, oh sorry producers for discovery channel certain companies discovery don't actually make their own shows they pay for other people to make them but they do provide resources for um, those companies so Back in the day, I made a lot of stuff, um, like a, a library set, essential, several library sets, company I owned. And um, we sold them to that. And we did some commissions and special things. Like that. Um, it's all a bit of a, a weird one. Anyway, so I'm going to move this up to there. <laughs> um, I'll do a QA and a at some point. I always get asked this question. So obviously, this is a huge door, and this is now a very, very big bolt. So let's bring it up in, in actually. Right, so there's no shadow lot or anything, but it's, I think that's a pretty cool looking, fairly high poly um, Object, but in reality, it's only 333 faces and two charging battery points. So, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I think that's kind of an effective tool. And without me waffling, um, I don't know how long have it's been running now. Uh, th 40 minutes without me waffling, this would probably take me 10 minutes uh, stopping to show you things. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into there. I've selected everything. I've pressed C to center the pin. 
Now, I, again, I'm not going to make this accurate to sizes. Um, I'm just going to eyeball it. So I'm going to go to 2D. I can choose to do 3D scale. Um, and you see that will set the value in each axis, in each each value. But I want it to make, maintain the proportions. And they will point 2D scale. And looking at this, I'm going to go point 0.2 just for the moment. Right, so it's still too big. So I want it roughly to be around about a third of the width of this space. So transfer scale um, 0 0.33. That's, that's 0.25, say. Still a hefty bolt because what I'm going to do. Now, if I go to here, so just to tell, let's work out the dimensions it's got. So, if I select the point, so I've got this, the point on there. So, what we want to do is the size across flats. Press C, and I put I select another point now. If you go to window and measuring, which I've already got up on the other screen, so I'm going to bring this. We've got this thing, pin to cursor. You can see when I'm moving the cursor around, the destination is the size that the, the value is changing. But I want uh, pin to center of selection. Now I've got a single vertices, vertex rather. I've got to stop saying that. Vertex selected. So that is actually 0.43 of a meter, so 43 mil across. Still a big, big bolt. Um, I'm going to say perhaps nearly twice as big as it needs to be. But let's just see how, how big this... Um, the, the bolt going through it is, rather than... So what I've done is I'm going to select those two points you can see on this. It's between there. So you select them. Entered the pin on it. He selected the one that the pin on. That's a 27 mil bolt, effectively. Um, I'm going to say. Yeah, I'm going to say that's a roughly a third to oversize for what I, I would expect to see. I'm not a structural engineer. Chemical and process, really. Um, I used to do a lot of production design. I used to redesign Dexter so that they could be produced easier. Anyway, so 0.6666 is two thirds. Um, you can keep going, but it, it maths round it up anyway. But... So that's two thirds of the size we've got. So we had before. Again, I'm going to select the point. So that's an 18 mil. I'm happy with that at the moment. I think that's kind of robust for a, a six or seven meter door, don't you? Um, so let's just. If you want to move something uh, with sort of a great deal of precision, it's going to brook like that. You never place a bolt. Sure. So what I'm going to do is I can use point transform move. Now x value is relative to the screen it is not always relative to it's relative to the viewport it's not always relative to the model space so in this you can see the z value 
I don't know. It is actually consistent. <laughs> it didn't used to be. I don't know why. I'm not entirely sure now. Um, so I'm going to go point. It's a shame to me. Uh, um, so I'm going to point uh, move points 3D um, value. I'm going to put it at point one, and I'm going to point point one there. Now it's disappeared off the viewport, so I'm going to cancel that just for a second. Watch this out. I'm trying to prove a point. Pardon the point. Transform, move. Not point one, not point one. So it's moved it too high. So I've got, I've moved too far. So I'm going to change the point third value to point north. Not point north. It's fifty mil. Still not seventy. Sixty-five mil, I think it's fine. Now I am going to go points transform move. Oops. Uh, zero Z value. I'm going to move it up. So what do you reckon? Um, every half meter. So I think that's a little bit too close together. So let's call it every meter. Don't want to overpopulate this with guns. Copy it. I'm moving the original, so I'll just copy it and paste it. Select both of them. Move it double the distance, so I'll back to move two meters. Paste it again. I'm, I'm some of the don't move to this. Uh, remove the ones you don't need. But there is a gap at the top that will be used for something later, so we won't need a bolt. A bit more. This evening it's now 2:06 a.m. Okay, Tom. I am just eyeballing. I'm going to select it all, I've copied them, swapping back to the other. It's got the door in. And you can see relative to size, the bolts aren't massive. Which is what I wanted. I didn't want it to be too much. Uh, again, each of the door panels that you can see that are actually just over, just over, oh, that's because they're not in the right place for the points. Aha, there we go. That's why, because there's two sets of points. Um, sorry, should have explained center on on this. So, yeah. right. So the door is split into sections. Somebody else probably asked me about. Off so we can see the point. So we have two axes in here, and that's the vertical translation between these two points. 
and then we have an axis that is assigned to the top of each door, part of each door. So, so there's 12 door panels. Um, so panel one is the bottom. So we've panel one, panel two, six, seven, nine. 10, 11, 12, um, just the way that they select it. So each of these has an axis. So panel one doesn't actually have an axis. If you can see, it's the axis starts at the panel two. But the axis for panel two is part of the selection for called door panel one. So when I go to door panel two see it jumps up over here and is actually axis for door panel three and so on and this is reflected in the skeleton so the the panel one um you know in the in the structure you have panel one panel two that inherits from panel one and panel three inherits from panel two and so on and, and it is down the tree like that there's some maths involved in, in calculating these. If people really want to know about it, let me know. I am, it's a little bit involved. It is a bit of a faff. I have created a spreadsheet to help calculate it. And the timing, timing is the most important thing. Um, but once you, excuse me, once you understand the basics, it's not actually that hard to do. Um, so I'm going to back. Back to my lot with all the models in it. So I, what I want to do is I want a new bolts across. So I'm going to select the two pieces there. Click C. Center the pin again. Which is perhaps not the best idea. There. Click C. It says top view. I am grabbing on. Again, going to the top, uh, the top two pieces, because I know that I want them mirrored. So click C to center it again. Pasted the objects back in. Points, transform, mirror X. This is relative to the. Um, when it transforms, you'll see these. You can see the red things with the blue lines. So when it transforms, it actually inverts it. So the faces are, are now wrong, and the, the blue lines are the normal line. If I press W, you can see that the lines move. So I want the blue lines facing out, and these that means the normals are facing out. Let's go back to... So, see them. It's a popping a little bit there. Well, anyway, so I've got the door panel source animated. I'm going to use square brackets to it. You can see that the doors pop over. It took me about an hour and a half to work this out. Um, like I say, it is a bit of a faff. It's um, a, a maths a bit of maths involved, which again, I've done a spreadsheet to help with people with. Um, if you want to know about it, hit me up on Twitter, Discord, whatever, and share what I know. Probably do a tutorial video or something. Um, sorry, Ginger. Hiya, Ginger. Um, I'm making a industrial building for uh, Bovington, you can, if you watch this video way back, um, when I first started, I did explain there's a little bit of a clip. If you find Bovington site on Google Earth, you can um, uh, see a great big building that's 160 meters long by 40 meters uh, by 80 meters wide, basically making that. 
but making more shutter doors and explaining about making bolts and things. Um, looking at it, I think I probably won't do the rest of it tonight. I may do it tomorrow. Or at least not stream it. And some, I want to revamp some of the door panels anyway. Um, sorry, I wasn't really looking at the chat. I wasn't actually expecting anybody to be watching at this time. I was just going to do it as a video. But anyway, we'll see. Um, so yeah, you can see that's, that's animating. Um, lower poly stuff, what I will do when I go into Modo, um, I will strip out this and I will essentially make just a hex bolt with a cylinder coming out of it. So I'll massively reduce the faces. It will probably be 12 round actual bolt itself. Um, and the nut will probably be just six standard faces. And I'll probably even remove the washer just because it, it should bake nicely. Um, again, the quality of the bake depends on the UV layout, which, again, I'm, I'll hopefully show another. Um, there's a few things I could probably show you tonight. I'm going to cut some windows into some of these panels. Um, which, again, you can, be, you can do in O2. It's not a problem. Um, but like I said, each of these panels are half uh, half a meter. So that'd be two. So we're looking at panel three. So let's grab panel three as a selection. Just going to save it because you never know it's going to crash. PCs bit. I grab panel three, moved it to a separate LOD just because it's a little bit. Now, if you look at most of the doors. Um, industrial doors. You've got these little windows in them. Um, what I'm going to do, looking at Bovington, actually, there you go. Yeah, that's the building that I'm looking to do. Yeah, I can't really get much closer. Oh, hang on. I really want gauze bushes. Someone needs to make me some plants for... Getting English plants is really hard. Plants. Okay. Those doors are solid. Um, it may actually just be that solid, but I'm going to put some windows in them just because I think it's better. Um, right. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to use the carve tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select those two points so we can center something. Um, again, I'm going to make a cutter. I'm going to make a shape. So I'm going to go cylinder. Um, Radius is going to be point. This is going to be point two. And segment radius. This is the number of faces around the circle. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it 24 because I'm, I'm going to half it in a second. Um, yeah, that's a bit too much. Create a cylinder. 0.4, 16. That's a split. So I'm selected the end pieces. I'm pressing delete to get rid of the faces because all I need is the profile shape. I want it to be centered in each of these little panels. Select these faces. So we can center the pin. So I've selected the points, press C to center. 
I selected the entire object, copy, paste, points, transform, mirror, press W to change the normals. You can see the arrows, the blue. Um, so always facing outwards. Again, selected the four points, press F6, four points again, F6. Now, this is a cut. This is a cutter. Um, what I'm going to do? Uh, copy it, paste it. I'm going to grab using the the move pin tool again. Um, I'm going to hover my cursor over it. Right click on the mouse button. Locked in the x-axis. I'm moving it to the next point. Now. That's moved the exact same distance, which means my door panels aren't symmetrical. The ribs in the door panels aren't, aren't properly symmetrical. Um, so that means I'm going to have to change some sizes. So when I made these, I was either drunk or stupid. Um, I am not going to commit to either at the moment. <laughs> um, so that's a little bit annoying. So just to make my life easier, I'm going to press C and I'm going to hit the insert key. And this insert key places the single vertices or vertex. Stop using the plug. Uh, anyway, so going to the select object tool, that's as well. See, that doesn't look right, does it? I don't think I actually placed them outside of the object sure i did there we go so it is the right size i'm being a mong which is a british slang word for an idiot again point tool grab the outside vertex of that oh right i can stop being ashamed of yourself so there you go. So symmetrical. Now, because this has got ribs and stuff in it, I am just going to quickly grab that, which is the the main panel, and I'm going to go across and grab cutters and move them, to bring them back. Because when we do this. It is going to make a mess of the inside and outside faces. So, actually, see what I mean in a moment. But the panel is one face there that we want to cut. And there's another face that we're going to cut through. The rest of it I want to leave alone. I'm going to go structure, structure, logy split, and that split the faces away from the other objects. I go select object piece. So I've selected the bits that I want to cut away. I'm going to go and put them back in log seven, where our temporary logs. You can see there's my rib side. So all I'm doing now is I'm going to affect those two faces that I'm cutting through. So what I want to do, I want to select my cutting faces. Now selected those. Now this is going to look really messy and essentially it's a Boolean operation, which is to remove um, one structure for another, but it, it what we're doing is slicing through because object builder just doesn't have boolean, <laughs> it just has carve. Um, there's a manual aspect to this, so structure, poly, uh, structure, and carve. And you can see, look at all those lines and faces and points. Now, this is a horrible, horrible mess. Now, there's a bit of a cheat here. Um, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this front face because it's the same distance through the panel. Um, I'm going to grab that front face, and again, I'm going to going to go to a new uh, another LOD. I'm going to create right click on the LODs list of LODs. So click new, open LOD nine, and paste that in just so it's easier for me to see what. Again, there's Boolean cleanup tools in in, in other tools in Blender and Odo and Max and whatever. Um, this is kind of old school, like I say, um, not perhaps the best. So I'm going to click D to delete that, um, to de delete those faces. Now, I've somehow killed my LODs window. But I'm going to show you something here. I left the cutters on LOD 8. So you can see this is where we cut previously. Um, now what I want to, want to do is I want to see the cutters. So I'm going to right click on LOD 8. I'm in LOD 9 at the moment. Active. So I'm going to right click on LOD 8. Click show at background. Now this is showing what is in LOD 8 in yellow for me. So I can see where my extra lines are, extra points are that I need. Don't need. So I don't need that one. So I can go back and I click the three vertices. So six, and I'll create a face. I selected everything. Press U for hard faces there. So again, don't need those points down there. I know that that's broken a few. Things. So I'm going to do something that looks incredibly destructive, and it is certainly. I'm just going to delete all the not. It just makes it easier to process. Um, so all, I've selected all the faces and just deleted them. So I'm going to remove the ones, the bits that I definitely don't need, that don't match my cutter shape. Um, again, this is why people slag oh, Object Builder off. It's an old tool. It's not really designed for what I'm doing with it now. But if you don't have access to the proper tools, to 3D Studio Max and all the rest of it, they are mega expensive. And I appreciate people use hack software. And there's other ways to legitimately get it, educational licenses. I personally prefer Modo Indy. Um, when I bought it, it was 120 quid. Sweet. You got Mara with it, which was um, the tool that actually they used to paint Avatar. Um, they used Nuke and Mari to do the Avatar movie. It is incredibly versatile. It's like Substance Painter, but not quite as friendly, in my opinion. Um, again, Substance Painter is quite possibly the best tool you can grab your hands, put your hands on. Um, for painting assets, it's so easy to use once you get your head around the workflow, um, and you can produce some amazing things. Um, I don't know anybody that make that doesn't that makes really good stuff that doesn't use it. There's Quixel. Um, there's a couple of guys that I know that actually use Quixel, but they tend to split the time between Quixel and Substance. It just depends what you get used to. I have both. I stopped using Quixel a long time ago. When I bought Substance, that was it. It was kind of, it makes sense to me. Everything kind of went. So what I'm probably doing here is going to be silly. But anyway, so what you can see, if I just bring the surfaces, I'm just going to flip the surface around. So what I'm doing is I'm rebuilding the faces, just so, just so you understand this. When we come to unwrap this, there's something called a texel, which is kind of like a pixel, but it's uh, a pixel is an individual dot. A texel is. Um, I can't remember the actual definition, but it's texel density. So it's texture, it's texture per pixel density, essentially. Um, so when you 
place your UV map when you unwrap something. If you only allow, and you've got like a, let's say, a thousand and twenty-four texture type, um, you can only place, or you can place that up, that that face in there but if you only use like five percent of the map when you bring it in game texture no matter what you put on it is going to look blurry it's going to look tiny it's going to look it's because the pixel density is low so you do need to plan ahead when you stuff up. excuse me i'm deleting that one f6 and i'm using the slash keys change the direction of the face um in modo and other tools there are on destructive ways to do this you can just spin the faces around Project build that again whole all tool set not quite as good it's useful um but you can see when i'm the reason i mentioned textile stuff see struggle faces very very see that it actually goes the door by the time that i finished joining faces up it's perhaps not going to be the best way so what i'm probably going to do is grab this but uh points them paste them i've got into the front view press p flatten the in and i'm there it will create a more faces in the model the reason i'm doing it is pixel density things other people have different opinions on this, I'm sure. Some of the, the professional people out there, if they do watch this, will go, oh, that's you know not the best way or the better way to do it. I'd love to be educated. I, like I say, I've been doing this stuff for a long time, but I'm not necessarily... As you say, benefit, benefit of my experience experience may differ i've learned a lot by listening and talking to people i consider it on occasion again that's not in the wrong something it's late i'm tired i'm just gonna put this merge So I know that these are all the same. I am just. Paste the game. So at this point, I know so this will about the fact is being a 
I'll have to press W to chose the center point badly, so I'm gonna And you can just see it balls that up. Now, on the other side, see in the behind us. Just gonna go. This is the inside face, and you can see the faster that we are in at the moment. But I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna grab this point for them, but I'm gonna go. Now, there's an extrude tool. Now, in most tool, most 3D tools, when you extrude something, it keeps the original face. In O2, it doesn't. So I'm going to copy that original face. And I'm going to go create, extrude. And click to my left face. And I'm going to copy the Now. I zoom around. I've got some screwed up faces. See that some points are not joined. And it, oh, see, we don't want it. It's created extra faces that I don't need that's going to cause problems. So I'm just going to do that. Back again. Control I. Engineer. Now at the bottom down here, 240 points. Yeah, so it's it's merged a load of points together. Let's double check that. Yeah, okay. click P. Find the points to the the vertices. It's still extruding them, which means that I've got a bit of a somewhere. Yeah, it's still it's still saying there's two points there. So I've pressed Control A, um, or I selected the point, pressing Control D. Points. If you're quick enough, you can two points. I'd love to make videos in front of I used to be. It's really quick. This is the other thing is um I, I got accused of bragging about this a little while ago. In the old days, um when you met when we made models OFP, we had like for a plane, it was like six thousand faces was the polygon budget. Um these days it's more like forty, fifty thousand faces. Again, I'm just gonna screw this. Um so I've selected everything it extrude. Let's do this properly. Text of it selected, press C. And I'm going to click it again. Eight extrude. That's really annoying. I missed some stuff. 
you can see that it, it's the faces are, are, are inverted. So I'm sure it is. So I've just pasted the other face back in because, as I said earlier, when you extrude something in this tool, it doesn't retain the original face. Extrudes bits that. Bizarrely, that's 18 points and nine faces, so something's screwed up there. I don't know. And nine faces. You can see where some of these these things store here. Just going to press control A to E. Change everything else. Now, you know, internal faces like this and joined faces will cause you. You try and bake things. Weird distortion surface normal. It should have extruded those. Do this for I go in and so that's selected nicely. So I'm going to copy that. So delete these faces, paste that back into Again, this is probably well. You, you can definitely do this in a faster, efficient way. Cut it for a second. Uh, you can see that little face there. That face. So with those selected, you can see right. So there's there's faces there. There shouldn't be. So if I now go into board. Um, in Modo, when you come to bake it, or you know any other tool, you'll get a weird uh, surface definition on it. Be like a, a like a distortion. This is because it's trying to calculate intersecting normals, so you've got a normal that's perpendicular to the surface, so it, it's kind of like 
imagine a pull on a plastic bag or something. Sort of ripple distortion. Um. Control everything. Engineer. So we've got 986 points at the moment, 731 faces. Uh, 248 points, 513. What a difference, thing. Eh? So you can see, again, looking at these normals, we just see where these blue lines are. So because they're split like that, they are actually sharp edges or so if i um, press i smooth smooth it you can see how the normal changes see on this front face how it's kind of now because i want a smooth edge inside the window cutout um but i don't really need it um i don't want it on the outside face I'm going to select the outside edges and click um, surface sharp edge. That's made everything sharp, apart from cutouts in. So that's the inlay. Now I'm going to go and get rid of this. So I'm going to delete it. Back into the. This is where I left the frame. Now you can see when I paste it back in, I I don't need these external frames, the external edges. So but what I want to do is show the back. Turn off. So this outside edge is going to meet that top edge. See, this is the outer front. I go to the outer edge, you can see where my outer edge is already got the external of the gonna go I'm gonna delete the end faces as well. Now when I look at the end seven I want top edge of the went to the top view press p So I'm going to go back to seven. That first. You can see it now. Shape. Back to seven again. And because panel working on reaches the full length, but the internal panel is actually shorter. I want to basis. 
again, there's, there's going to be a lot of people say, oh, you can do this much faster in other tools. Yes, you can. Um, purpose doing this in O2 is show. I wouldn't do normally do this stuff in um, in O2, but but I just thought show and do now. There's going to be a bit of a, a mismatch problem, yeah. Where do I just go? Merge. All right, so I've got 322 points, 534 faces, but it's not a. Um, it's not actually a fully joined structure. And should prove that by go structure topology find not closed. See how spaces are. They should be, and I don't. Just sign them. So I'm looking at 150 points there. It's not merging them. Still only one. It's showing that. Oh, I know why. Um. So if I'm, I'm just gonna grab. I cut it. So if I grab that so you can see separate vertex. Everything along this edge is not actually joined up. I select this this face. That's a single face. It's never going to join, so I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to go select two endpoints. I'm going to select that first point. And this comes back down to pixel use again. I should split. No, I can scale of. See the pieces. Should take us to Okay, to me, no need. Oh, best view. Space. Which sounds really bizarre, actually. Um. So when I go back to points, right, structure, close, still have open face. Two points. Interesting.
just going to grab this bunch. And I've just pasted it in. Again, perfectly centered. And I made these, I estimated them, which is a When I originally started this, it was purely see if I can get I'd like to say that I'm ridiculous. Should be. But there's the inch bar. This is where it pivots. So again, just take the top edge. You can see all the. Bases. I'd actually love to know if anyone from this ever. I'd love to know the original solely. I know um, objective. I think it was professional development. I was incredibly grateful to get it. I mean, it's fascinating history of it. So we're back to two seven. Which doesn't tens points structure. Okay, so we've still got some issues. The reason that I'm kind of being a little bit anal about whether it's closed or it's to do with creating a shadow log. Because, yeah, shadow logs have to be closed. So we've lost two points. It seems a little bit overkill to do this. Um, again, there's to another. We are. There is a little tiny time occasionally. Yeah. See there you go. Should have been Up so. so 
we're getting closer. Um, just wonder. I work out where the hole is. <laughs> Ah, uh, see what's um. See where it says there's two faces there. We have a face on the inside and we have a face on the outside. Let's recall face. We've got two faces there. So again, O2 or the RV engine will not tolerate double faces. Faces that are posed um so there are, again there are tools a lovely tool in Odo to go through and delete duplicate them um and you can flip and align again i haven't found anything in o2 and if there is something there i would appreciate knowing what it is. i doubt there is Again, oh, I haven't. Things like this I find easier, bizarrely, in uh, in O2 than they do sometimes. I've introduced something along the way. I've, I've pasted this in, screwed this up at some point. One of the things I don't like about tutorial videos is they show you how, how it should go. They never tell you how to. You, you never see them fix the stuff. It always seems to go perfect the first time around. And I have yet to do a job where in my stuff it's always just so that's a good face there oh, to make I, I'm always fascinated. I always back when weird one. So right, I've just selected that, copied it. I am going to make my line. Delete. I'm even going to be terrible. Delete X. Pasted that single piece in. into be paste again grab my point again if you'd already on un un UV unwrap this um, it wouldn't mess with it I want you to do shit load next year. So 
so I can merge them anyway. There's 115 extra votes that I don't want, so. Merge near. Oh, we've got 391 down there. And because this is essentially. When I'm not explaining, join. I always find it weird that I sound so different than I do. Okay, you shift sharpen. Right, so there you go, non close. So we're, we've still got. Two verts. Shift D. Spam. And we've now got a size solid. Very long winded. You can probably. Because it's a glass panel, um, this is. You know how deep, so just measure. Back to the. It's actually fifty-seven mil thick, so that's a lot of window. It's not much for an panel, but it's very big. So we don't. What I'm going to do? I'm going to that. So. That's now 17 mil thick, which again is very thick for a door, but it's armor, and because of the geo issues, I'm gonna say that it. Um, so I'm just gonna center the pin there, pin to seven. Ping lob. These are the ribs that support the sonar controller. In. I'll add a window piece, which is a single pane. Well, but trolley now name selection panel in. It's already. It was originally um, door panel three. Now, if I click on this now, you can see is the selection is destroyed. It's not neat. So these are the door three bits. And when you see these little verts, if it's a solid red like this one, or corner, that's good. That means it's a, I've got the full weight. But this one, which is sort of pale blue, why does nothing ever go wrong? I'm trying to demonstrate. Um, should actually do that, but um, when you go to the weights, which weights panel got?
I can't find that now. That's bizarre. Um, anyway, yeah, I need to reselect, redefine this. So I'm going to press Control A for everything. Everything that's in the pod is panel three. Right click um, and redefine. Um, so when I go back in and select, see that it's all selects the same. That back into. So again, this is panel three. The panel three. Back in. So now we've got door. That panel is about meters up. And you can see it now animates properly. Not exactly achieve what I was going to do this evening. But I have added doors in, I added my perhaps really shouldn't say things like that, but we've got the you know the higher poly. Um anyway, it's two and a bit hours. Um whenever you watch this, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it helps. I'll do a few more if people like it. I'll try and be a bit more focused. Um stuff. If there's anything in particular that you want to see and it's something that I can show you while I'm making again thanks very much uh time for watching thanks very much for you can it really help with motivation um if you're one of these people that likes to send abusive and crappy comments up yours go away um if you don't want to make um she's different support advices great more of it please it does help um some of these projects are incredibly laborious and i get bored i get frustrated and i wander off the more people that are interested in and to focus on it um i do jump around on projects because like someone asked me recently eat adhd i don't Believe it or not, I have been tested, but until lockdown, I used to travel around a lot. I had, I was ill for 18 months, which prevented me from doing things. Some days I just wasn't well. Others just don't feel like it. And others I was in hospital, wherever I I apologize if you're waiting for something specific and you're getting frustrated. But it, it, things are starting to normalize. The workflow is getting there. I, I am not got a job problem. Some various other things. That does free up more modding times. So hopefully, you should see a few add-ons come out. Anyway, it's now 10 past 3 in the morning. Thank you very much. And um, have fun. See you another time. There you go. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.